Welcome back to The Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a true story that happened in the summer of 1942 in Paris, in a film called, The Roundup. Spoilers incoming. In June of 1940, Hitler and the Nazis already occupied the city of Paris, after easily defeating the French army. Jewish people are all forced to wear the Yellow Star of David badge, which lets them be easily identified from non-Jewish people. They are even banned in some public places, wherein a young boy named Joe Weissman can only watch the carousel, for he cannot enter such premises. He then goes to school, along with other Jewish kids. Before entering, they are all mandated to recite phrases about German propaganda that are against Jews. Their teacher even warns them that whoever mentions the Yellow Star, will be punished. At the same time, Field Marshal Philippe Payton is being informed of the containment of Jews, to which he has a lot of questions since his countrymen are at stake. After school, Joe and Simon Ziegler happily go home to a place where most Jews live together. They both hurriedly meet with their parents and quickly run to get Simon's brother, Nono Ziegler, at his school. Once the three of them are together, they all do their usual routine of using Nono to lure Germans into giving them money, as well as going to their usual place to talk bad about Germans. After a few laughs and chats, Joe is back home with his family where they show a great relationship with one another. He even acts like Adolf Hitler as a joke, wherein at the same time, Adolf Hitler is shouting aloud his propaganda of wiping all Jewish people off the face of the earth. After his emotional speech, he sits down and talks to Heinrich Himmler about speeding up the process of exterminating Jews before an international outcry occurs. Meanwhile, police chief René Bousquet is being pressured by Nazis to deport 100,000 Jewish people to concentration camps. He refuses at first since the number that the Nazis are expecting is too many for them to handle. However, he eventually gives in and creates an agreement with them that the police's authority must be restored. Unknown to many of such cruel acts that are about to happen to innocent Jews, a woman named Annette Monod finally graduate as a nurse in France. She enjoys her day by riding the carousel and going about cycling in the city without any restrictions and worries in her mind since she isn't a Jew. Unfortunately for the Jews, Joe's older sister is upset since Jews cannot join activities like ballet anymore. Their father Shmuel Weissman can only comfort her daughter by saying that the war will be over soon. All of a sudden, their eldest daughter Rachel Weissman tells them to run away since their privileges are being stripped from them, but with the little money that they have, her parents explain to her that they can't leave their home. Back at the office, Pierre Laval continues to persuade Philippe Payton into deporting Jews. Philippe explains that his countrymen will disagree to deport French-born Jews, and so Laval then creates an agreement wherein they will only apply such acts to stateless Jews, or the immigrants. The office eventually agrees and Bousquet leads his policemen into reaching a quota of 24,000 Jews to be deported to concentration camps. A few days before the forced deportation of Jews, a policeman informs Tati, a non-Jew who lives amongst the Jewish community, that the authorities can invade the community any time now. The night before the invasion, Rachel tells her parents about rumors of them being deported again, but they just shrug it off since rumors like these had happened before, but none came true. As they all fall into peaceful slumber like any other night, the authorities quickly enter their homes, with Tati trying to warn the Jews to run away. The police are instructed that couples and young adults with no children are to be sent right away to Drancy camp, while the others are to be sent to the winter velodrome. All of them are distraught, knowing that even children are to be brought with them. One of them is Bella Ziegler, who is currently pregnant but is mercilessly hit by a policeman. With cries of terror ringing throughout the place, some Jews choose to commit suicide with their children rather than experience hell in concentration camps. The police finally reach the home of the Weissman, wherein Sura Weissman lies about his husband recently passing away to save him. Unfortunately, Joe slips his tongue and tells about their father still being alive. Early in the morning, all families are forced to leave their homes with only essential things to bring with them, fortunately, some escape. Even wealthy Jews are caught in the chaos, wherein the Traub family is commanded to pack their things. Dina Trabi's eldest daughter, Anna, thinks of a plan for their family to escape. She lets her mother and sister go through their attic, while she buys them time to escape. She then successfully outruns them and plans to meet with her father in school. However, there are a lot of police around the area, so she is eventually caught and left unconscious by them, where she is deported along with the others. 
Later on, Nurse Annette is assigned to Winter Velodrome filled with more than 16,000 Jews, which is too many for the medical staff to handle. She sees the poor condition that they are in, with being starved of food and water for days, and young children being sick. As she attends to the young ones, she then meets Nono, who is unaware that their mother had passed away of hemorrhage, due to a policeman hitting her too hard on the night of the invasion. They eventually become closer, along with Simon and Joe. Amongst them is Anna, who asks for help from a plumber to take her outside and reunite with her family, wherein Annette kindly offers to lead her outside just to make sure that she can safely escape. After days of living without water, a group of firemen is ordered to check on the hoses. However, after seeing Jews begging for water, the chief fireman orders his subordinates to use the hoses to give them water. While doing this, they also sneakily accept letters from them to be given to their loved ones. Even though what they did is against the commands of their superiors, the chief fireman insists his acts are moral and right, and he even commends his subordinates' kindness in helping the Jews. He instructs them to post the letters as far away as possible to avoid suspicions and to say that they are acting alone if ever they are caught. After that, Germans also enter the velodrome to inform medical staff that the Jews are to be transported tomorrow. And so they all start to pack up their things, with one nurse collapsing due to overfatigue and attending to too many patients. Annette then requests Dr. David, who is also a Jew, that she be assigned to the children, to which the doctor agrees and tells her to get some fresh air because she is starting to look pale. As she goes outside, a police officer shows up to smoke outside. There she takes the chance to wake his conscience up since what they are doing is clearly immoral, but the police insisted that they are only doing their job, or else they'll be killed. All of a sudden, the Jews are quickly taken away to ride trains and reach their destination. While walking, they start to sing their worries away, not knowing that it is only the beginning of their sufferings. As they reach the Bon La Roland concentration camp, their singing stops as they see where they will stay. With bed bunks filled with haze as their bed and foul smell from the previous Jews that had stayed in those rooms, they have no other choice but live in such conditions. Though their bed may seem bad, they are still grateful for the little things that they have in the camp, like flowing water where they can finally wash up. Meanwhile, Nono comes to ask Annette about his mother, but she can only lie to him that his mother is resting in the hospital since she just delivered his younger brother. Later that day, food for them is served by the nurses. Annette then questions their food as to why their soup has nothing in it and bread rations are too little. Jews can only live by such small portions, and as the Weissmen are eating, Joe suddenly spits his food behind a guard. The guard then thinks that it is an act against him and so he slaps him hard, creating a ruckus between their meals. At night, Joe couldn't sleep because of what had happened, and so his father comes to him and blames himself for not listening to his eldest daughter and protecting them. On the other hand, Annette is writing a letter to their superiors regarding the immoral conditions that the Jews are experiencing. She also ate like Jews, making her lose 14 pounds in just three weeks. Dr. David then comes to her and tells her that her letters will just be ignored since Jews are never their priority, to which Annette continues to insist on helping them. The following morning, she personally goes to their prefect. She, fortunately, meets him and there they see her weak on her knees and illustrating to them the poor conditions of the Jews. Back at the camp, Anna delivers a package for her mother and sister, where the kids finally get a taste of toffee after a long time. As to Annette's persuasion, her superiors finally listened to her, and so sponge cakes are brought to the camp along with vegetables to be cooked with their soup. The Jews and nurses all dance along to the music on their radio, instead of listening to German propaganda, to which the guard lets them enjoy their remaining days in the camp. The following morning, all of them are awakened due to them being transported to another concentration camp. All Jews are required to go, including Dr. David. And so Annette rushes to tell him that she will try and follow their convoy so that she can continue helping the children, unfortunately, Dr. David tells her that it isn't possible. On the other hand, female Jews start to throw their valuable things in their toilet, saying that if ever Germans are to take it away from them, they should pick it up in their feces. As they are all being checked by their names, a woman is beaten up by a guard for hiding money in her clothes. The others can only watch as she is being kicked several times, and among the bystanders are Joe and Sura. As the son and mother are giving away their pieces of jewelry, they see Dina and her daughter being rushed to give away their belongings, and one guard pulling an earring from Dina's daughter's ear, making it bleed. As they all go out, 
the guards then announce that the children are to be separated from their mothers saying that it is due to the lack of rolling stock. But the truth is, crematorium chambers are falling behind due to big numbers of Jews that are being killed daily, making it less likely for them to accommodate them all at the same time. They all protest against the guards, even Annette who rushes to fight for the children's rights. Unfortunately, they are all threatened by gunfires, forcing the parents to leave their children. Annette and the other remaining nurses can only help take care of the children before they are sent away after 10 days. After a while of thinking, Joe finally decides that he will escape the camp along with Simon and Nono. However, Simon refuses since he has hernia due to malnutrition, making it difficult for him to run and carry Nono with him along the way. In the end, Simon and another kid named Joseph Kogan are able to escape the camp with the help of the others and nurse Annette. The day of the children's deportation finally comes, and Annette is furious at the guards for forcing even sick children to go. All of a sudden, she faints as she is too overworked and stressed due to her current situation. While children are being brought to the train station, Annette is being taken care of by Dr. Juice. He then finally tells her the truth, that the children are being brought to their death, just like what happened to their parents who were the first ones to be killed as they reach their destination. She fights through her weak body and cycles her way to save the children, but she is already too late, and can only hold onto Nano's doll as she watches the train leave. Moments later, Joe and Joseph see the train that contains the children, and like Annette, he can only watch as his friends and fellow Jews are departed to their death sentence. Years passed, and Paris is finally liberated from the German Nazis in June of 1945. Annette continues to work as a nurse and help the children. After covering them with blankets, she goes to a place filled with faces of Jewish people who had gone missing or are kidnapped by the Nazis during the war. She looks around and hopes to see the children whom she had helped before. She is then visited by Joe, who fortunately escapes and had been adopted. As she bids farewell to him, she miraculously sees Nono who had survived, and hugs him tightly. Of all the 13,000 deportees in the summer of 1942, only 25 had survived and out of 4051 children that are put on the train none had ever come back thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this see you in the next video